be the right club today. Yes! What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench. And I'm going to go over something that I have been doing for probably the last 10 years when it comes to installing grips. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos. I've seen a lot of your comments. And it's amazing that a lot of people don't really understand this process or really even know that it exists. But it is a game changer when it comes to grips. The way that I used to install grips is probably the way you all are currently doing it right now, using uh, double-sided tape and solvent. That's great. Totally can do it that way, but here's the problem with that. If you want to change the grips, you have to cut the grip, and you're ruining it, right? So the way that I'm going to show you is, one, faster, two, cheaper, three, easier, and four, allows you to save your grips and make modifications to the grip or the club without having to damage the grip. This stuff, gone. All we use for this method, no double-sided tape. You don't use double-sided tape for this, okay? Regular old masking tape. Now, I like to use this build-up tape because one, it's super sticky. It's got a little bit more thickness than your regular hardware store masking tape. And it has a nice surface on here that's gonna allow you to get the friction you need for this process to work. What else do we need? Air compressor. Now this one right here is just a Husky. I think I got it from Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. But you can just as easily get this, this style, which is a hot dog style compressor, oilless right oilless hot dog compressor or you can do an oilless pancake compressor you don't need more than three gallons okay you can get these easily at harbor freight if you want to go easy for under 60 bucks the other thing that you're going to want to get it will come with a hose so you don't need a hose i just have a longer hose so i can reach and then finally what we're going to want is to get the accessory kit 10 bucks, it comes with all these different nozzles and adapters and, and all that stuff. And this is what you want. This guy right here comes with that and it comes with a variety of tips. So that is the setup that we want coming out of our air compressor. And let me show you how easy it is to put on a grip using this method. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be regripping our five iron. We're gonna set this up in our vise to hold it. Okay. Now using our build-up tape here, you can see, we're going to see where this needs to go on the grip, on the shaft. So we're going to put our tape on, like so. Now this is an Arco grip, but you'll see on the back you've got your little vent hole. All grips have a vent hole. And what I do is I'll get a very little bit of solvent. I mean, compared to what you would use for... A regripping it's nothing and you just want to lubricate this tape just a little bit and then also get just a hair to put on the tip of the sh of the grip here just a little bit we want to get it started and get it in there quickly insert your adapter piece here into that vent hole like so see it's just hanging in there and then you're just gonna line up the grip like so, and then apply your air. Square it up, because unlike solvent and tape, you're not gonna have a lot of working time to get this set up. Just wipe down some of that solvent that may have sprayed out of the top, and that's it. The grip is on there, and it's on there tight. This is ready to play with right now. Now, here's where I like this. Let's say I wanted to do something, like I wanted to swing weight this, add some weight down into the shaft, right? Or um, maybe change the grip out. Or maybe I want to go to a standard size, and I, I want to put a couple extra wraps on there, get rid of the taper, do some work up here. All you have to do to re 
place and do your work without damaging your grip is to repeat the process. So we're gonna put this in our grip, give it a couple and it comes right off. Now you can add your layers onto it. You can ramrod some weight, steel powder, whatever it is you need to do. And when you're ready to put it back on, our grip is still fine. Just put it on and blow it back on. That's it. Done. So it really couldn't be any easier than that, guys. Now, of course, there's always exceptions and limitations, right? Everything can't be perfect. So this only works, this process works for your core rubber grips, your golf prides, your lambkins. It'll work on rubber, it'll work on corded, it'll work on multi-compound, etc. It will not work on wind grips or any kind of grip that has a two piece to it. So you guys know wind grips have these outer core layers and then they have an inner core layer. So when you do this, you run the risk of popping that inner core and that'll ruin the grip. Uh, so these would have to be done traditionally. My set, just as an example, I put an extra layer down here over the weekend. 14 clubs. It took me 30 minutes to do that. Uh, I will suggest the one thing that I like to do is I will pre-cut all of my tape, right? So I'll cut it all whatever length I need and get it all ready. That way it's just put air on, slip it off, put the tape on, slip it back on. You're done. Super easy, super quick. So one other thing that I want to add on to this as well. If your grips currently use double-sided tape, you can't use this method to take them off. You have to use a special tool to take them off, and that is what this is right here. And if you don't know how this works, stay tuned, because we're going to do a video on how to safely remove your grips that are used with double-sided tape using a Slim Jim. If you have any questions on this, leave them in the comments below. You really should move to this method. If for anything, it is so much easier and not as messy as using your traditional solvent methods. G2 out.